Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to edit your photos on Instagram. So this is a little bit of a beginner walkthrough. We've probably, most of us probably have uploaded videos, used filters, but I'm gonna actually go through all of the available editing tools, what they do, and kind of show you how to use them for a beginner or just if you've never looked through them. So whenever you're going to post on Instagram, you can choose from your camera roll or camera. And once you get to the main editing screen, you have the choice between filter and edit screen. And you also have this little button at the top, let's start with, which is the Lux filter. So what the Lux kind of does is darkens the shadows and increases the highlights, kind of adds more contrast to the photo, like a high dynamic range photo. But I'm just gonna leave that at zero. Sometimes if you overdo it, it can kind of cook the image a bit much. But that, that is there if you wanna boost it up and add some contrast. But beyond that, you have all of your standard filters. So you have your famous or infamous filters that Instagram is known for, kind of what they got started as, as an app. And you can just simply click through them and see them applied on your photo, or you can see the preview. And also, if you ever click on a filter again, you can get the strength and border options. So if you didn't want 100% strength, you can lower that down to all the way to just like 5, 10, or 50% opacity or strength. And so you can do that with different filters just to get a slight touch, but not fully get that cooked out image. I always like going with subtlety whenever I'm editing photos, keeping things a little bit crisp and clean. And then also the little square button on the side is the border. So a lot of these filters come with their own unique borders, um, whether rounded edges or film type of looks, like the Nashville filter is a famous one. Uh, you see that little film strip border that happens on top. And you can even just use the border, but turn the opacity down to zero, which is a cool trick. You can also manage the filters. So if you know you always use Nashville for yours, or you don't like seeing all them, uh, you can see a lot of these old filters, or some of them aren't even active. So you might not even know they're there, but you can turn them back on or turn some off. So if you know you only ever use Nashville and Walden, you can only keep those on, or you can drag them up to the top and then press done. So now you see all those new ones there. Some of these are from older versions. Some of these have been around for a while. And a lot of these are just replicating film camera looks. So aside from that, if you ever go to the edit page, you can kind of create your own filters and do more adjustments. So I'm gonna go through them left to right. Adjust just allows you to either straighten or crop the image in different ways. Uh, just kind of fixing lens distortion if you want but I'm just going to X all those out, keep them back to normal. Um, you can also press this button to flip it sideways or horizontal. And this button on the top left lets you see more or less grids if you're just trying to position things kind of like with the rule of thirds or something. A lot of these are pretty self-explanatory. Brightness, increase or decrease the brightness. Um, so I'll leave that. Contrast can be useful, um, especially if you have kind of a grayer, more washed out photo. You can just boost up the contrast a little bit if that's the style you're looking for. Also, you can lower the contrast if you do want a more washed out look, but there's a few ways to do that if we, as we carry on. Structure is kind of like the sharpness almost. Um, you'll notice it'll give a lot more definition to all the edges if I increase this. Kind of like Lux, but again, I don't really want to cook all that sweat on the face and all the texture in this case, so I'm going to leave that down. Warmth is kind of like the color balance or the white balance. So if you increase it to the right, it'll become more warm. If you take it to the left, it'll become cooler and more blue. So if you did have something where you want, it was a shot a little bit in fluorescent light or something and you wanted to fix it, make the white balance white again, you could use this slider. Or if you simply wanted to add more coolness or warmth to the photo, this can be a useful one. Saturation is also very useful. Uh, if you wanted to make it black and white, you can just lower the saturation all the way. Or if you wanted to boost up those colors a lot, you see the sky is getting a lot more blue, but also the skin is becoming unnaturally saturated the more you do it. But you can just a little boost of contrast and a little boost of saturation sometimes can add a little bit of pop to your photos. Color is another cool one where you can influence the color inside of the shadows or highlights. Uh, and you're not, you'll notice a lot of these filters are separated between shadows and highlights. So this is kind of like a split toning effect. If I make the shadows 
one color, you'll see it'll influence all of these darker portions. And if I make the highlights another color, you'll see it'll influence the highlight colors. And the same with these, if you tap on the color again, you can increase the strength or lower the strength of that. So I can just make the sky that yellow color and I can even have nothing for the shadows. I can simply only influence the highlights or the shadows. So we're getting this cool green sky effect here without really touching the shadows. So it kind of adds a nice touch. If that's the surreal look we're going for, um, obviously this is all up to your creativity. Fade is kind of the, like I was talking about with the contrast, fade will just kind of lift up the black point of the image. You'll see this a lot if you're trying to go for that vintage kind of faded film look. You just increase the fade, it'll lift the overall black point of the image. So there's no longer any true black. It's all more like a light gray, which can kind of wash out your image for the film look. Highlights and shadows kind of go together. So highlights, you can make the highlights brighter or darker. And then shadows, you can make them brighter or darker. So this can be good if, for example, the sky was overblown out. You can turn the highlights down to kind of bring back some of that texture in the clouds without messing with the shadows. Or if there was some detail in the shadows that you wanted that was kind of lost, you can bring that back up without messing with the overall brightness of the image. And lastly, you have vignette. This will kind of add a, a shadow around the corner of the image. So this can be nice to bring in focus to the center if you want it. And then tilt shift will allow us to add some blur around the edges or the top and bottom. So radial tilt shift, and I can actually click with my two thumbs and make it bigger or smaller. So you see this is adding some blur where the tilt shift is not. So maybe I can make the focus just on the eye or in the back and linear changes that to be more like a line rather than a circle. So I can blur out the top and bottom. This can be cool for city type of photos if you want to do like a miniature city or just to bring focus into something. Or you can just turn it off. And lastly, we have sharpen. So this will just generally sharpen or not sharpen the image. This can be a little bit better than um, trying to sharpen by adding lux and contrast and high dynamic kind of definition. That way you don't cook the image too unnaturally. But you don't have to do every single filter. Like before and after on this one is pretty dramatic. We've created our own kind of custom filter and border, but you don't have to do that. I could definitely lower that strength on the highlight color. It's uh, taking over a lot of this image. It's kind of giving it the look, but that can be the look you're going for. So kind of in this way, we've created our own custom filter but not only can you do that you can still go back to the filter menu and add your own filters on top um, i was using the border only in that case but even after you've done all the edits you can add another filter on top and mix it but in this case i was just using the border from the nashville filter Unfortunately, there's not really any way you can save your settings in the edit folder for doing them on each one, but I guess you could write down your plus and minus settings in a notes app or something if you wanted to do the same ones every time. But that's basically all the editing tools. It's pretty simple, but Instagram does have some decently powerful options if you were to just be shooting and editing straight from your phone, straight from the Instagram app. So if you enjoyed this video, you can go follow me on Instagram at Show. Uh, show me the edits you made or show me some cool pages that you want to see me try to recreate the look of in Lightroom or something. You can check out more editing tutorials in the playlist on my channel and subscribe to stay tuned for all my new videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.